Iranian elections uh, have been an astonishing, uh, surprising uh, experience. Uh, first of all, because uh, there has been a huge participation of Iranians, uh, which was not the case since 97, I would say, the elections of Khatami, the landslide uh, victory of Khatami in 97. And it seems that, once again, the youth, the women, uh, intellectuals, middle classes, rural classes, everybody participated in the elections, um, and everybody was expecting uh, uh, different outcomes. Uh, now, the outcome uh, for uh, many of us and for many of younger Iranians uh, has been uh, a, a, a kind of a, a negative, I would say, and uh, hopeless. Uh, first of all, because many people think that there has been a lot of irregularities in the elections in Iran, and they are correct to think that way. Uh, secondly, because they think that uh, since Iran is up to 80% um, uh, cities and urban areas, most of the urban areas were supposed to vote for uh, Mir Hossein Mousavi, and uh, well, it happens that there is a, at least a gap of 10 million votes between Ahmadinejad, who's re-elected as a president, and Mousavi, who uh, was in the opposition or the reformists, and he was not being elected. Now, one can talk about putting aside the irregularities and the fraud, one can talk about two things. One. Uh, well, it's sure that uh, the populist regime or government of Ahmadinejad, uh, Mr. Ahmadinejad, has always uh, been uh, more uh, closer to the rural areas, uh, uh, more uh, concentrating on, on corruption, on the idea of corruption, on the idea of um, economic uh, welfare, and on the idea uh, that uh, there has to be more help to the poor. Well. We do accept that, that, well, some, certainly it's possible that some rural areas have voted for Ahmadinejad, but I don't think that the gap would have been 10 million votes. That's, uh, that's one thing. It, it could have been at least the same like in 2005, and we should have had a second round uh, for the elections. The second thing which is very important are the international consequences. Now, the international consequences, I think, are very... Uh, I think are deeply uh, conflictual and uh, they are going to be uh, somehow very negative for the new Iranian government again, uh, the, the re-elected government of Mr. Ahmadinejad. Because, first of all, the Obama administration, which is itself newly, re uh, newly elected in America, they were concentrating on uh, dialogical approaches towards Iran, and they were hoping somehow against the hawks in Washington to engage in a dialogue and to solve the issues of Iraq, Afghanistan, and uh, uh, the peace process in, uh, in the Middle East by the help of Iran. Now, it makes it more difficult with the government of uh, Mr. Ahmadinejad to do so, and uh, Europeans, meaning especially the uh, the British, the uh, Germans, and uh, the French, they had already asked for more sanctions towards Iran, and they were waiting for the results of the uh, Iranian elections to see that. Now, it might happen that they go on with the sanctions now that Ahmadinejad has been elected. Uh, another thing was that um, many people, are not on the, only the political level, which they were expecting more reforms and maybe more uh, empowerment for the civil society, in Iran, they were expecting somehow uh, some economic changes in Iran because uh, despite the program and of Mr. Ahmadinejad, what is the issue is that uh, we had in the past four years of his government, there has been a rise in inflation and also in unemployment. So if it goes like this, it's going to be an economic fiasco, I would say. It would be a lot of trouble for him and for uh, the Iranian society. So, actually, uh, we see from the very first day of his re-election that, first, his election has been contested by others. Secondly, he will have a lot of challenges on hand, more than the past four years, because it's going to be international challenges on the nuclear issue, on the peace process in the Middle East, 
on the talks with the United States, uh, sanctions um, against uh, were put, put forward by the European uh, Union, uh, and also uh, it's going to be a very challenging uh, economically because he is supposed to solve all these problems, and if there is a, somehow the price of the uh, oil is going to go down again, uh, it becomes even harder uh, economically and politically for this government to somehow sustain itself. And um, I hope that uh, we will not go towards any form of violence in Iran. There has always been some clashes between the Iranian civil society and Iranian states at different levels, intellectual, women rights, uh, student movements. And, but this time I think that there is a uh, open clashes in, inside the nomenclature, Iranian nomenclature itself, meaning um, they have arrested 100 people from the reformist groups, apparently from what uh, we heard from the media, and it, these people who have been arrested are not dissident intellectuals, they are people who, some of them uh, were the hostage takers of the American embassy in 1979, 1980, and uh, they were also uh, among the revolutionaries. So in the past 30 years, they have been part of the, the system itself. And, and uh, this is, I think, is, is, is a start. I mean, it shows that there are a lot of controversies, a lot of challenges, a lot of debates, a lot of uh, issues, political, economic, social issues, inside the Iranian regime, and, and uh, I think that Ahmadinejad, uh, as the president, and also his uh, government and his cabinet, they need to solve these issues one by one if they want to stay in power, and uh, they cannot do that by violence, but they have started doing it by more violence, and I don't think that this violence will be either legitimized, justified, or accepted uh, by um, Iranian society or by the international, I would say, community.